We've all heard the news. The average 30-year mortgage in the United States just surpassed 7.6%. This makes it the highest level since December 1st, 2000. From this perspective, the situation has become dire. Everyone is now wondering how it's possible that this market remains stable. What started as an annoyance has now expanded into one of the worst asset bubbles in finance history. The story of how we got here is one that explains the future and raises serious red flags regarding the future states of this unstable economy. The housing crash that's coming will be the worst we have ever experienced. And to show you why, we take one step back into history, looking at clear evidence that what is happening today is far from normal. You see a lot of people, when they show you a chart like this, they're showing you housing prices throughout history. But this chart has a severe flaw. It fails to capture the all-important aspect of inflation. Over a 40 or 50-year period, the power of inflation is often overlooked. When someone says, I bought a house in 2000 for $200,000, that doesn't necessarily make it a deal, because $200,000 in the year 2000 is worth about 356000 in today's 2023 dollars meaning that while on paper, this person is up on his home. It's not a real gain. So in order to measure a bubble, we have to adjust for inflation and showcase how much home prices really went up to do that. There is the inflation adjusted case filler, which without boring you to death, shows real home prices. This chart will show us truly how home prices are overpriced without the illusion of the falling dollar. And as you can see right now, we have surpassed the last bubble, which was considered monumental in terms of US history. In fact, based on the pioneering research of Robert J. Schiller and Carly Case, we have relatively good data on housing prices going back to 1889. And as you can see, 2008 was absurd. The price of a home reached a level that was previously believed to be impossible to reach. And while there's been a trend of growing real prices, in the last 100 years, it's still clear that today's bubble is now worse than what we saw in 2008. This span was considered normal, but since about 2012, we've left all sense of normality. So what makes me think that we'll end up back here? Well, there is a point in this argument where I think the bulls lose their ability to argue against a crash. It starts with a bit of history. It wasn't really all that surprising to see. The 2008 bubble start to develop after the year 2000. The reason for that was interest rates. Throughout history, interest rates were high. When you apply them to today's standards, for the last 30 years, we've had a slow decline in rates. This enabled the ingredients for the 2008 bubble to form and collapse. But that wasn't our lesson. In fact, after the 2008 bubble, the Fed continued to suppress rates at new records. They pushed them down to 2.6% at some point. And of course, they started a new bubble from late 2011 to today. The real price of a home, meaning the inflation adjusted price rose 66% outside of the 2008 rise. This country has never seen a rapid acceleration like this. And each time it's happened, we witnessed a crash to bring this phenomenon in line with the historical average. Now if you look at this chart and say to yourself, well that just isn't enough for me. There is another body of evidence that, in my opinion, is the nail in the coffin. It essentially proves that something in the market must give. Now before I show you this aspect, please take a moment to help the channel out by hitting that like and subscribe button. Each like is a massive help for the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. If you just took to seconds to press that button, now back to what I was saying. You see while the housing market is heavily influenced by interest rates we know that most buyers and investors are purchasing using some sort of loan, typically the 30-year fixed mortgage. Now without diving too deep into this topic, we know that the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is essentially a derivative of the 10-year treasury. Basically this financial instrument dictates what mortgage rates will be. Now the question is, what does this have to do with my home and its value? Well, to answer this and finally put the nail in the coffin, we have to understand a bit of context. Imagine a 10-year treasury note, like a special kind of paper 
that the government uses to borrow money. And the way they do that is pretty simple. They take your cash with a promise that they'll give you the money back with a little bit of interest after 10 years. Currently the interest rate they are paying is 4.5%. Now here is where it gets interesting. There is also a two-year treasury note. And if you look at that one, the interest rate they're paying is 5.02%, which means that the government is paying you a higher interest rate to borrow your money for two years instead of 10 years. Typically, it's supposed to be the opposite, meaning that the longer you let the government borrow, the higher the rate is supposed to be. When the rates are inverted like this, you get something called an inverted yield curve. Long story short, inverted yield curves are the most obvious signal for a recession. When a situation like this happens, the chances of a recession are nearly 100%. If you look at this chart, going back to the late 70s, every single time, the line went below zero, which signals an inversion. What followed was a recession. This was true in the early 80s, early 90s, early 2, 2008, 2020 and now. If you zoom in, you can see the problem. This chart is from 2022, so it doesn't show the new developments. But essentially, we have gone even deeper in the inversion and are now starting to come back up. Now you might think, well, we're coming back up which is good news. Maybe we've managed to avoid the storm, but this couldn't be further from the truth. The worst and really, when the recession typically starts, is after the inversion is complete and the line moves past zero into positive territory. Look at 2008. It was years after the inversion that the real pain began. Right now we have a situation that's extremely troubling. The Fed is pushing rates to the brim, but the bond market is sort of calling their bluff. And this is really my final point. When it comes to a future crash, you see, for example, the 30-year yield is essentially the same as the 10-year yield. This means that investors are starting to think that there will be some serious inflation in the future. We know this because every rational person would buy a 30-year treasury if their rate was attractive. But it's not because there is so much uncertainty regarding the next few years. This is why buying the 10-year for the same yield is possible. Because in order for the 10-year to sell, you need incentive. And the incentive is a rate that's absurd when compared to the 30-year. Now if you don't understand this part, it doesn't matter. But essentially, investors will believe that inflation will continue to be high based on these treasury curves. And if that is true, you have to think, if the Fed is raising rates to beat this inflation, eventually to have inflation pop off again, you need the Fed to capitulate. And in order for that to happen, you need a crisis. The crisis is right here, in our face. The complete destruction of the housing market via this apparatus right here. Rates are like gravity. And right now, we are entering a known territory. When something breaks, it will bring down this massive house of cards that's been building since 2012. And the bubble that we used to know as the biggest will look like nothing compared to this. Now before we wrap things up, let's see how this housing market crash will affect homeowners and investors. It's not just about higher interest rates and potential economic slumps. It's a big deal for regular folks and smart real estate investors for homeowners. When interest rates go up, those with adjustable rate mortgages or folks looking to refinance might struggle with higher monthly mortgage payments. This could lead to more foreclosures and a bunch of homes on the market at rock bottom prices. As for investors, especially those who bought properties thinking they'd keep going up in value, they'll face new challenges as prices drop. They might end up with properties worth less than what they owe and less rental income. Thanks for watching. As always, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it.